We have FDW versus CK. Actually, we switched that up there. CK is going to be on the left. So here we go, popping in here. Get the five summoner block on for a 3v3. Epic. Here we go, first band Teemo, then we have a Morgana. I know last time, uh, I think, I think this is, so this is game two of a best of three. FDW won game one pretty handily. They actually were running a big CC team when I was watching the practice earlier. So see what the bands are based on that. So Teemo Vane. Ben coming out of CK. They don't want to face some ADs there now. ADs actually can be played on Twisted Tree Line. They can be pretty effective. It really depends on how uh, good you are at positioning. Uh, Teemo is really good on Twisted Tree Line because you can actually place mushrooms everywhere, basically ward up the entire map, cause slow traps all over the map. Vayne, there's a lot of walls to actually condemn people into. So that is, again, very, very strong. Morgana, of course, very strong tanky, pushing AP. Uh, so she's great for Twisted Tree Line, as we saw last time. Wasn't the best player we're getting, but this time, uh, probably faced one in the last game. Zin Zhao is very, very good, actually, Twisted Tree Line. Not so much in 5v5 five, five Summoner's Rift. He's, he, I mean, he can be good, but he's typically a little bit weak. But on Twisted Tree Line, tanky DPSs are excellent, and Zin Zhao is very, very good, especially with his awesome gap closers and CC. Garen, a very good ban on Twisted Tree Line. Garen can really carry early game. And again, you know, the theme kind of is, is you want to have this early snowball stomp your face in team. Uh, you know, characters like Scion. Trindamir, you know, he's an exception. He's a, he's a kind of a late game champion, but he also is really good early in matchups. I mean, honestly, he's a very good top cell. I mean, if you can, if you can survive in a top cell lane early against a lot of these uh, other tanky DPS characters, that's typically what you're going to face on Twisted Tree Line. So, Trindamir's still a good character. Plus, he can actually spin across walls and he can farm really well. Typically, what Trindamir's will do is push up a lane to the wall, then go through, clear the entire jungle. And by that time, the wave is pushed back. They clear another wave and just keep doing that. And they farm so, so much. And there's a bunch of other buffs that you didn't see him play last game uh, that actually come up a lot. There's just some speed buffs and stuff like that. So we have a Nasus. So we're going to see another Nasus in here. And right off the bat, we're going to see an Ari Scion. Again, Scion, very, very strong hero. Uh, very good early game. Uh, so he should be really, really good. And then Ari, of course, has uh, a lot of good dashing mobility. And she has a lot of good dashing and speed and mobility just on Summoner's Rift, which is a big map. But Ari, again, you know, on 3v3, small map, but she's just, you know, so she's... <laughs> the mobility has just increased, you know, because of that alt and the small map, just dashing around through all the brush and stuff like that. And we're going to see Graves, maybe. Interesting. Graves does have a dash as well. He can't actually go across walls. I don't know how good his dash is on Twisted Tree Line. I haven't seen him played a lot. A lot of long range. Nidalee. Nidalee is a very good. She's another trapping character. Can lay down some traps to gain vision throughout the jungle. Spears can tr fly very far. And she is very, very mobile. Which, again, on a smaller map, is really, really good. You can have a lot of quick rotations for ganks. Although not a lot of CC, if anything, for Team CK. CK very, very CC light. Whereas you can see uh, Team FDW uh, very heavy in CC. And ooh, and Anivia. Oh, please. I love, I love me some Anivia. That's an AOE stun on top of that. Well, typically Anivia again, she's she's blue dependent. Uh, so what we're gonna probably see is a lot of early mana items for her to try to sustain her on three v three. And if she can get that mana, you know, go rush a tier or something like that. Uh, she can be very very strong. But there's no blue to give her to just constantly push her lane or something like that. But her walls, on, uh, they're really good in the jungle on some of those rift. In lane, not so much, but since all the lanes are small and a lot of the fights do happen in jungle, she has so much block potential uh, with that wall. She gets it, takes it up to level two. She could do it, work it in there some semi early. Uh, basically, go that instead of maxing up her uh, her uh, Q stun, then uh, she can actually block off most of the entrances in uh, jungle. So, could see that strategy come down. Again, we are at three minutes. Gonna reveal some summer spells. What do we got here? Double ignite. For FDW, two ghosts, uh, exhaust, and a flash. That's pretty good. All flashes for the opposing team. And a surge for Italy. That is, that is cute. I don't know if that is exactly what I would go. I would actually. I know I would not go at surge in a <laughs> in twisted tree line. But you know, it's okay. Whatever, whatever one wants to do. No smites. Now, see, we didn't see a lot of jungle last play, 
But 3v3, uh, jungle is very important, and just like Smite gives you a huge advantage on buff control in Summoner's Rift, it gives you the same huge control on Twisted Tree Line. I mean, especially when it comes to dragon or red buffs, or just clearing the jungle in general. If you have a smite and they don't, I mean, you win, which is actually why typically in uh, what teams will do is I actually like to play Cho'Gath in 3v3s because one, he's a super tank. He fills all that role, has an AoE silence, rupture, all great CC, has, you know, the standard Cho'Gath things. But the other thing is you can use Feast as your sort of smite buff control ability and you get to forego actually having to use uh, smite at all in uh, your team coming. You can go more offensive spells and stuff like that. So that is another option a good character for 3v3s to go with again shout outs to atlas networks giving us this venue to go cast and do games from down here tt esports thermal take cooler master gigabyte and mnpc tech they actually mnpc tech actually gave a lot of really cool big prizes so sh major shout out to them um we also have a StarCraft 2 tournament going on here. There's a lot of people playing BF, Battlefield 3, Minecraft, all sorts of stuff, Counter-Strike Source. So if you came down here to Emerald City Land Fest, you know, there's games everywhere to do. Kind of reminds me a lot of Intel Land Fest again. All these people uh, worked with that. Now, the thing to point out here is actually uh, Bitter Fun, the Scion player, actually uh, was involved with getting uh, Emerald City Land going on here. He's actually a case monitor, has a really cool case here with a dragon, red lights in it. Uh, so, but that's actually what he does, you know, for, you know, his, not for, for to say for a living, that's what he does for his, like, main hobby stuff outside of work, is that uh, he actually builds custom systems, and so he has some really cool computers on display here. And we should be hopping in the game really quick shortly here, 30 seconds left to go. Iwan will probably be joining me after he gets done taunting Tyler and telling him all about things, so this game should be a little bit more competitive. Although, you know, interesting Twisted Tree Land teams, you know, here again, you know, I kind of wish I we got to play in this because I would have played all sorts of random fun characters and had a blast with this. I, I do I do enjoy Twisted Tree Line 4. It's a uh, different meta. Uh, it's very different style of game. High wind coaching. Uh, Tyler, try to help him win through this game. I told you, we support Tyler. We these this this is our guy. He's got the Tyler's patience the of a stone. Tyler's on the brink, though. Patience of a stone. I, I don't think that's what I, I gathered well, after the last game. That's right. That's not the impression I got. <laughs> so just from uh, Tyler. so quick insight. I wasn't off gallivanting and grabbing monsters, although I did grab a monster, and these monsters are delicious. Well, and you don't gallivant. I know that for a fact. That's true. Uh, but I was talking to the Microsoft guys. You know, I, I tell them how much I love their new, uh, their, this new kit that they got. But actually, uh, potentially in the works, nothing set in stone yet. But we might be doing some sort of like online event where we cut to the top four and have a, a LAN finals at the Microsoft store. Nothing for certain, no promises, but just some insight into what might be happening uh, at our RYW event. That would be really cool. I, I, I would think be that would be really that. awesome and fun. Again, it is a cool, if you don't know about University of Washington, uh, the Microsoft store down there, they actually hold 3v3 tournaments down there. Uh, but it's 3v3 tournaments, and it's really hard to get a 5v5 tournament going in there. But you know, cutting down to a Final Four from an online tournament, doing an event down there would be really cool because it's a really cool environment. You have everybody's in the store shopping, but then you have uh, the big screen in the back has the game up. All the players are right there. You have the casting on the PA system going all the way around. People from outside can see through the giant windows. If you've seen a Microsoft store, they have giant windows. It looks kind of like an Apple store if you've seen one of those. And so they can see and they're like, what's going on here? And everybody's piling in and you know just great great scene down there again U University of Washington pa purple caster minions are usually down there usually the regulars crowd around down there so it would be a lot of fun to actually do an event like that that would get me excited yeah see I'm not just some uh, schlub that casts half a game <laughs> 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 but anyways uh, I, I am coming late to this cast and it looks like uh, we actually have a different team, or we have a different game. Is this a third yes. game, game two, game three? This is game two, uh, FDW with Bitter Fun on there, one of the uh, people running uh, Emerald City Land here down here. Uh, yeah, he's a Teemo player, so this is interesting to watch him yeah, uh, play someone with the Teemo. So I think they looked at his profile. Oh, no, a but, target but ban on Teemo. But this is game two, and they did win game one handily. And they, you see right here they favor a very heavy CC team. Where the opposing team here, CK, does not favor the CC. And now, I didn't get a chance to troll you, but I was going to ask you, what do you think about the skins? It looked like everybody had a skin. <laughs> we, I don't know what you're talking about. What are skins? <laughs> but, oh, this is, uh, so we've got Anivia, Ari, and Scion. So a ton, nothing but magic damage. Unless that Scion goes AD, which would actually, actually be really AD strong. Scion is very strong. AD Scion seems really good. Yeah. Uh, the Nasus, Graves, and Nidalee. I, you know, I actually think both these, all, both these teams are, look really strong. 
Nidalee's got a lot of mobility. There's a ton of rush on this map. What do you Crit feel about her summoner spell? Uh, is that Surge? Yes. I actually think it works on Nidalee. Okay. Uh, because she gets the attack speed, the AS, and the AP buff. And okay. in cat form, I think uh, her... her um, oh, there we go. Q across the wall does not... Oh, my, no, it does not land. Wow. I like, I like this coordination. So this is a very different night and day from what we saw last game. A lot of jungle invade. This is very smart. This is typically what we actually do on our team. We were running threes as you invade this brush. Um, if junglers wanted to start here, it would be very, very hard for them to do so. And I don't think we're going to see that from uh, Team CK, though. They're not going to be jungling. A lot of times, typically what they do is they'll sit down here just waiting to, to farm the creeps down here. And then you come in through the top, and as you can see, they do not have vision. And you can surprise people really quick, especially when you have three stuns. You can stack them very, very easily. Uh, I don't know if Ari did go charm first. Maybe she did not go charm first. She went orb inception, so... I actually think Ari's actually really good on this map. Oh, she's great. I mean, again, you know... I think all the new chaps are <laughs> actually really well, good. Well, the thing is, is like, she's she's kind of like Nidalee in that, like, they once they get their alts, they're really high mobility, but on a really tiny map. So they can switch lanes, run around the jungles very, very quickly. Yeah, I mean, those ganks actually could be... I mean, it's a move... You know, that mobility, that ganking... And it looks really like they're strong. just going to wait to gank top, and that would actually be real smart. Although they have played a game, so they might know this is up. Uh, Grazy can see hugging his tower, not even moving out. I mean, playing smart. I like this. They're just waiting for them to show themselves in lane. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't know where they are. Uh, they I think they're thinking red. They're all staying back. I think there was a huge gank last time. And so no one's getting any experience really right now. Nidalee is moving in a little bit farther. I'd like to see the trap in the bush. They can still see it there. If one of them would invest in a ward, this would actually be a lot better because then they would know a, a lot better for sure. And it looks uh -oh. like we might... Oh, running over one trap there. So the jig, the jig is up, but they're definitely staying really far back. Graves still hugging his turret. They're very, very scared. Apparently, a lot of respect from both teams. Although, you know, this is, you know, what we see actually in top lane on Summoner's Rift is sometimes is that players will give up CS in order to push lane towards their turret, and that might be what's going down here. If they're, just, they're simply trying to back off and, who oh, panic exhaust from uh, Nasus there. Not necessarily required. Probably was save after that hypnotic gaze. There we go. Now they're pushed more down towards their turret. Should be able to farm a little bit easier. Probably what they wanted. Level 2, early for San and Ari. They are ahead here. You know, Nibby, you know, we're going to land that stun. There we go. A little bit of burst damage there. Nibby kind of kind of wants to wait till level 3 so she can get more levels into her flat Frostbite here. Frostbite, again, if you have actually uh, that slow proc on your opponent, Frostbite actually does a d a double damage. Heavy pressure on this bottom turret. So what's going to happen here is that this turret's actually going to deny a lot of XP from bottom lane for CK. And Nivy, you know, she's an interesting pick. Uh, she went. She's always going to rush tier, so she's going basically Summer's Rift kind of build. Except for it's a little bit safer if uh, you can see everybody in lane because you're not going to be afraid of a jungle. And she has their passive, which is very, very good, of course. Uh, 14 fights makes her very, very tanky. Makes her a tanky AP champion. But you know, the mana sustain is going to be the big thing because she cannot get blue buff on Twisted Tree Line. Doesn't exist. Stun. Orb of Deception, true damage on the way back. And Nass is going to get a lot of poke. That's kind of a sick here. combo. I mean, it's like the old school, like, Tarek Siver. Yeah. Except for... The magic version. Yeah, <laughs> the magic version. Although, you know, uh, Siver actually used to be AP. Her boomerang blood used to be AP. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, you actually used to go AP early, so you could, remember you could clear cre creep waves in one blade? Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Because, right. like, you know, recommended build used to be like... <laughs> yes. Yes. That was the, the old school build. Wow, that harasses intense. It's very good. It's good at range, actually. They're not taking any turret hits when they do that. And he's right in front of there, so working out very well for them. Ari, a little bit low on mana here, though. And it looks like Nidalee did go Doran's Ring. Uh, and she only has one creep stat. Hopefully she's leveling her E, her heal, so she can heal Nasus. But it looks like Nasus is going to go back and heal. Meanwhile, uh... I kind of feel like this Graves is playing way too passive. I mean, he's getting levels, but at the same time, he's like so far back from the creeps. He's really, really scared of ganks, even when he can see everybody else on the map. So he knows there's no other ganks incoming. He should be able to go up here and actually deal with this uh, Anivia pretty well, but he keeps running into the, f uh, the Flash Frost and well, getting the, the Frostbite getting burst down. Uh, he's, you know, he's still he's getting even, CS actually, he's a, Yeah, he's ahead in CS. So. Yeah, so doing pretty good. So actually, you know, maybe it's just a smart play by uh, Graves. I mean, For if he's able to get the CS, it's perfectly fine.
So again, uh, ooh, Sia now in the jungle, starting to jungle now. He's getting picked up by that trap. Again, smart Nidalee traps. It looks like he's got a blue pill. They can see him. But he can transition to the jungle if he wants to. He's going to go back. He's going to be the first one to buy. Only has 9 CS, so not too much gold. He's going to buy boots. He's going to be a little bit quicker. He's going to be able to get off that hypnotic gaze shield combo. That is oh so potent for this poke comp they got running bottom lane. Ooh, Nadivia hit level 6. She's going to have a huge advantage here. Now, typically, no, veteran uh, Nadivia players, if you want to tip, uh, when you throw down your ult, you actually want to throw your Frostbite first. You can throw your Frostbite, and if you're within in range of your Frostbite, that it goes out, you can actually throw down your ult. You'll still be in range to throw down your ult with the extra range uh, that it gives you, and you'll be actually able to proc it before Frostbite lands, and you'll be able to do damage that way. It's a lot more efficient than throwing down your AA and have it, AoE and having it suck mana from you longer, because it does take mana over time. What's the cooldown on our Frostbite? Uh, is it really short? Frostbite? Uh, uh, her nuke. Oh, her. Yeah, it's really, really low. It's uh, 4.66 seconds currently on her. So is it possible to frostbite, throw down your alt? Yeah. And then since they're slowed from your alt, hit them with your Q, which I don't know the name of it off the top of my oh, head. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's the standard And then combo. frostbite again? Yeah, yeah. So typically God, what you want to so do, dirty. Yeah, so you want to throw frostbite first, then lay down your alt. It slows. Typically what you'll get the first time is you'll get a flash from them or some form of uh, deception because they don't want to take... The frostbite, especially when you get a few levels into it, right? Uh, when it hits start to hit level three, level four, it's very, very dirty. Level so level five for Anivia, and then, uh, then yeah, you can throw your Q and land it because they are slowed, so your Q is now way easier to land. And so one, after your Q lands, then you can actually frostbite a second time. Very, very strong, effective combo. Hit not a gaze there, no bubble actually up for Scion. There it is, bubble waiting a little bit. It's going to be taken down easily yeah, by the rest Charm of the team. Uh, yeah, poor Nasus would have been toast. Yes, Charm actually a little bit slower now after the last uh, nerf patch. So it comes out just a, just a hair slower, gives you a better chance to dodge. And they were looking for another kill there, getting pretty aggressive under this turret. And Sion, we don't. It looks like I mean he started Doran's ring, so it's pretty AP centric. So we don't know if he's going to go AD or anything yet. But he isn't farming like he's going to go AD. Looks like most of the farms going to Ari. Or actually, it's pretty even. Actually, never take that. So back. purple side actually starting to out farm quite a bit. I think this harass is paying off. Um, these guys are well ahead in CS. What? Did you see that spear was like past him and then landed? <laughs> that was weird. Interesting. Little hitbox there. Nivea actually went, so she went uh, Sorcerer's Shoes first before the tier. I guess that's okay. It gives you some more damage and burst in lane, but I actually like the tier earlier because you want to build up that mana because later on, you can't afford to be out of mana in that team fight. Throws. Uh, the Flash Frost there, but the Flash Frost is not in a late, late uh, Flash to get out of there. Yeah, Wanted to make sure. Did force Flash. Which is good. And Nidalee, meanwhile, very low bottom, taking a ton of harassment. This lane, so much damage. And Birds of Trailing, that's again, early advantage. You know, that's really what you want to look for Twisted Trailing. We're seeing it right here. Again, no real jungle play from either team, though. Jungle is actually a big part of Twisted Tree Line. At least back when I play, at least from what I understand of the meta, can get a lot more farm that way. You don't want to just stay in lanes pushing all the time. Nivia, again, so Nivia is out of mana here. You know, you want to have that tier early. So she needs to get the tier as fast as possible. She actually might have the, the gold Five, for it. 568, that's actually pretty close. I wasn't at five, or is it 580 after the blue sapphire crystal? What are we going to see here? Nope, it's a little, yeah, see so she's a little bit out of it. 273, 280. Yeah, I think she needs just a little bit. She's going to wait for it probably. I think that's what's going to happen here. And no, she's not just going to run out of here. Maybe it's 890. It's been a while since I actually built tier on any character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's really so. It's really efficient on characters that want to get DPS out of it. If you just break down the stats, like if you want to go man immune, so like a Corky, a uh, Yorick, or something like that, if, or like characters if you want to get the, DP, the the man immune out of it, it's super efficient. If you want to go Archangel staff out of it, Archangel staff actually is not really efficient at all. Right. Uh, it's actually pretty bad money wise. So uh, going tier is not really the best thing on a lot of APs just because you can't really build it into anything else efficient um, unless you're going to go man immune or in the Nivea's case, she's just so mana hungry that it's a very good standard item for her. Right, and, and same like Rise, right? I think it's a standard item on Rise. Yes. Yeah. Just because, <laughs> well. Uh, and, and usually, I mean, you just get it early. Oh, here comes a ghost. Rise scales off of mana. Oh, there we go. Another Frostbite. Auto attack. Just so close. Long range auto attack. And that's a big thing about Anivia. She has a huge auto attack range. And there you see it right there. Running to Dragon like she was going to take it on, but I don't think you can do it by yourself. Anivia. Oh, there's the dash under the turret. Anivia dashing back and forth. Just need a little bit more damage on an Nasus. They're not 
not going to get it. Bubble from Sion trying to chase this down. Bubble's going to be gone. Hit not a gaze. That should pick up a kill. Ari's going to pick it up. Delaw pulling out of here. And so early kills. Unfortunately, and the cap not enough deeps uh, <laughs> to, to take down the two characters in the turret. Yes, not enough. And they are, you know, again, they are very, very tanky and uh, a lot of mobility actually from Ari. And just so much CC, it's, it's really hard to deal with under turret. Yeah, the, the stun charm is, is ridiculous. But on top of a bubble and Ari's boomerang, for lack of better words, orb. Yeah, uh, I mean, orb of deception. Or is it really orb of deception? Yes. That's the name of it? Yeah. Are you I serious? I believe it is, yeah. Orb of deception. Yeah, man, that's a, that's a World of Warcraft item. <laughs> for you, my uh, World of Warcraft fans, that's what I'm talking about. Hopefully. <laughs> Otherwise, they're noobs. <laughs> oh! So Nivia cannot see that her flash frost just landed. So Graves actually what needs to rotate up, down, not back, forth. Uh, yes. That makes sense. So uh. yeah. You want to move laterally to skill shots, not uh, straight back and forth. It's kind of like it's kind of like you know uh, striking in MMA. You don't want to move forward or backwards. You want to move laterally to dodge punches. Same concept applies here. Unless you're Michael Bisbing going against Dan Henderson. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't the MMA references out there. <laughs> oh, look out. Wizard Reference does not just do League of Legends. That's right. They don't call me Joe Rogan. Oh, that's right. They don't call me Joe Rogan. Anyway, back, back into the League of Legends. <laughs> Joe Rogan sucks at League of Legends, though, so, you know, you got that on him. Man, Anemia just really farming well after 60 creep stats, first blood. Yeah. I think she should probably just push up this wave with the and alt, go back and alt flash rod. Yeah. And go back to it. And then also the other thing to note is you want to be active using your spells to last hit when you have your tier up. Oh, Sion's in a lot of trouble down here, but he's actually going to pick up the kill onto Nidalee. And Sion's going to escape with just a little bit of health. Very good move by Sion here. Third yes. kill going to go down for the purple team. Oh, wait, what, what is the name of this purple team? Uh, FDW, I believe? Yeah, FDW versus CK. So CK is blue, FDW is the purple team. And I actually looked at the actual name of that team, and I'm really just going to call them FDW. No, yeah, that's actually why I'm calling them that. <laughs> the name's slightly inappropriate. Again, if you want to know the team's names, you can actually go to challenge.com and slash E-C-L-L-O-L. Wow, both these team names. <laughs> actually, most of the team names, actually, if you look, are not very uh, uh, viewer-friendly or uh, age-appropriate for uh, younger viewers. So, uh, yeah. Again, these are pretty fun teams. These aren't uh, any That's serious right. teams. This is a casual event. We <laughs> are at a, at a BYOC land. Yeah. And uh, None of them are representing sponsors, I don't think. So. <laughs> FDWCK, I mean, those are cool initials. Absolutely. Yeah. Clark Kent up in the his house. Yeah, word. Oh, there's a stun. This Graves Frostbite is on the trouble. On tap. If they push him out, they might be. I'm not sure what Nidalee's doing here. She's uh, waiting here for ultimate spear, maybe? I have no idea. Sorting out some uh, stuff for the people here. Do some terminal organizing while we're streaming. Hypnotic Gaze going on, and Nats. Nats is trying to back out of this. Ari dashing in with her alt. Oh, just, just misses, misses the, the charm. charm. Oh. <laughs> Again, it comes out a little bit slow. Bane of a lot of people these days. <laughs> Uses her, her Foxfire right there. And Nivia just owns that lane, and now Nass is dug in very deep. Has that all flash after to try to get that last hit. Orbit set just misses by a pixel. Uh, that was Ari's. That was Ari's, actually. Yeah. 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 Yes. So there we go. Nivia rotating down. Might see a kill now. Nivia does not, doesn't look like she has wall yet. Oh my gosh, so many. Two CCs missed there, but it doesn't matter. Nidalee is torn apart. By burst damage right there, and now we might see a second turret going down. There's a push is very, very hard. And maybe actually very good pushing and defense. Super annoying on uh, Twisted Trail. Actually, now that I think about it, she had to keep her mana up. Uh, her defense is almost impervious. And there we go. Another stun's going down to Nasus. Nasus trying to get in here. Second stun, layering those stuns. Foxfire going to pick up the kill there. And they're just going to back out here. <laughs> oh, bitter fun's fun. almost a falling. 
getting away with about we see Gray out. Quick draw Graves Oh, I wanted it so bad. I wanted it so bad for the kill. Quick, so for those who don't know, Quick Draw actually is this dash, and his ult has a huge range that explodes past uh, the cursor. Team FDW running away with this game. Actually, currently flawless, 6-0. 6-0, 5k advantage here. And about. 5k advantage is pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty big in Twisted Tree Line, cons considering it's spread over three characters instead of five. So instead of a 1k advantage, uh, if it was spread evenly onto each player, it's spread out. Uh, we have a lot more gold to buy items individually, and there's so and if he has actually just rushed the arch angle staff. Uh, so okay, okay, buy, but uh, not typically what I would go for. I'd go for a little bit more tanky, and I'd more like you probably go tier, tier catalyst, tier catalyst into yeah. rod of ages maybe. Yeah, yeah I could, I would definitely support that build. Yes, because I mean you want to be tanky on this scenario here. All Tuscan, I mean although you're this far ahead, it's understandable. Although I would rather just uh, instead of finishing the recipe uh, to get the the wand and uh, to finish the recipe for Archangel Staff, I'd rather just go start going for my Rabadons and get more AP that way. Oh, since we're so far ahead. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if I was going to go Archangel Staff at that point, I'd just be like, okay, I'm going to go for Rabadon instead. Yep. <laughs> All right, the Anivia tank. Oh, <laughs> oh, ate the trap. Ate the trap. If the trap pick up the kill, that would be so epic, except for it won't it would because burn she has the egg. egg. But yeah. Yes. Uh, egg, one of the best passives in the game. Basically so like a Guardian Angel. And actually, oh, picking so up a bomb yeah. turret. Nasus pushing incoming. You know what? They gave up Dragon for it, but they ended up getting a bot turret, so that was pretty good here. Uh, they probably should go grab red, uh, and actually both teams should probably consider buying a ward. <laughs> uh, can we get a count of how many wards have been bought in this game? <laughs> uh, actually, Anivia has two wards. Anivia so has two wards, so Anivia doing a good job as an AP. I know, I hear your AP doesn't like to buy wards, but uh, in Twisted Tree Line, uh, Requius, you know, picking up more wards than Boss Cow in a 5v5 game. Yeah, so. uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? That <laughs> Shoutouts to Boss Cow. <laughs> he is the AP mid for Team Ranger weapon. And he's a stud for the 6 Aerith while just missing, leaving that pool, uh, that ult up a little bit too long there. The thing about that ult is, you know, if the opposing team had CC, you actually can cancel that ult with CC pop-ups, anything like that. Will cancel in the V's ult. Which is a good thing to note, although they don't have a lot of that on the opposing team. Mainly just slows and uh, vision uh, cancelers. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that burst is huge. Flash to safety is Graves. But uh, Ari, uh, yeah, uh, Ari is too, too quick. And oh, layering the stun. Frostbite pick up the kill. It's working out as it's holding the land. Oh, ignite coming in. Good layer of her abilities there. It was actually pretty impressive. Now her ult is back up. Foxfire actually targeting just the champion there. Deception Orb. True damage coming back online. And Nasus is chasing, but Nasus has no mana. So after he runs out of this ult, Ari can just turn around and actually kill him. He's chasing in here, but this is actually not good for him. There's the charm coming down. Foxfire going off. Lots of damage coming here. Meanwhile, no, Sion just killing top as he goes. <laughs> Exhaust comes in. Just got, it's actually going to protect him, maybe even save him here. <laughs> and and Ari will pick up the kill. D-Law kicking butt here. Bitter fun just clearing this up. This game should be run to a close pretty soon here. Yeah. Top and hip, top bottom, top, top turret down. Bottom turret just waiting to fall. Anivia's rocking in here. And Anivia actually went chalice too, so now she has lots of mana. And a blasting one, so even more AP on top of that. So what these guys should do is uh she could probably go back, shop. Dragon's probably gonna be up here in about a minute. Maybe less than that. Grab the next dragon and then just push in for the win. Uh, I think at this point, even but with their tankiness and with their CC, they probably could even maybe just take someone off again. Like, uh, uh, Nidalee just hanging out here. You see that burst damage just from 
uh, Nivea alone. I think they can even just three push bottom and push it in. I don't think they can actually defend it even under their turret. Yeah, because actually Nivea's ult should be enough to zone them away from yeah. their turret. Meanwhile, like Scion and Ari can just uh, then take down the turret. It's like a pirate ult that you can just leave there permanently. And there we go. Nats run away. Good wall there. Slowing, him, slowing down his retreat. And look at that mana just come back on. Now she has enough mana up here. And there we go. Ari rotating bottom. Scion's going to rotate down here. And we should see the last push. Nats is almost down there. Great flash frost there. Getting the AoE stun, too, for one. And now Ari runs in. Foxfire. Oh, my gosh. Look at that burst damage. It is so nuts. Has a revolver. Standard build. Dives in there. No escape. And this turret will go down. And they will just hard push this probably to the Nexus. Game two of the best of three will go to FDK. Congratulations. FDW. Oh, I'm sorry. FDW. Congratulations, FDW. Ooh. Uh, and they should take round one there. Yeah, they're going to move on to round two. Uh, they will play the winner of... DW and uh, SC. SC. Yeah. Not to be confused with StarCraft. <laughs> <laughs> All right, better fun. Super tank. <laughs> what you know about turrets? Oh, poor Graves is getting blown apart to pieces. There we go. Next is going to fall. There we go. I think we had our first winner so far in the brackets. Uh, yes. Actually, that is correct. So I'm going to actually stand up. I'm going to go find out and see who else has won and moved on. And we shall be bringing you round two here shortly. Yeah. Congratulations, FDW. Tankiness. Again, tankiness. CC. Very, very strong. I'm supposed to trade line. There you go. See it coming through. FDW putting on the best performance so far. But again, haven't seen any teams really take advantage of the jungle yet. 14-0. That is... Ooh, that is nuts for uh, that's a pretty flawless game. Pretty much playing a perfect game there in lanes.